Packer and Durham on a uh, Monday morning. Drew Carter's in for Mark. And uh, Bradley Delph and Boston bring us back here. And that means Scott Forbes is with us, the uh, head baseball coach of the Atlantic Coast Conference champion, North Carolina Tar Heels, joins us this morning. That has a nice ring to it for you this morning, doesn't it? Yeah, no doubt about it. Exciting day for our guys yesterday. Exciting day, really, for just the University of North Carolina and their athletic department. Our lacrosse team winning the national championship and our guys getting it done. Um for an ACC championship against NC State, just an awesome day. Great day to be a Tar Heel. All right, so here's the question. Being the head coach, how different did it feel going through this process? Because I know you've been an assistant on a championship team. What was it like being the head guy, thinking, okay, here we go through pool play, playing pretty well. This is on my watch now. Yeah, no doubt. Um, it's definitely different for sure. I would say the biggest difference um, was, you know, sitting in a hotel room at Virginia when we were 8 and 13 and then reflecting back on that. Like, how in the world are we here where we are? And that's credit to our players and our assistant coaches. So once we started playing well and turning around and swept Florida State, I felt good about going into the tournament and really at that point as a head coach, you just, when your guys are playing that well, you just try not to screw it up. Well, Coach, let's talk about that turnaround because, I mean, y'all might have been a bubble team at certain points of this year. And now here we are. You've won 15 of your last 17. You're ACC champs, and you're hosting a regional. What changed for your team? <laughs> you know, we've always – we've loved this group from the get-go. Um, they've done everything right. They work. Uh, great, great job in the classroom. We have great leadership within our locker room. So as a head coach, I just felt like, okay, these guys, they can turn this around. We need something positive to happen. And then we had that exam break. Um, we, we beat Liberty. We beat Charlotte. And then we found a way to beat NC State two out of three at NC State. We didn't play great, but we won two one-run games. And that kind of flipped the switch. And and our guys had a great weekend with, with Alberto Osuna walking off with a home run on Thursday night against Florida State. And they, they've continued to uh, – to play well. But again, it starts with pitching and defense and through this stretch, we've really pitched well and we really defended well. Scott, the, uh, the irony you mentioned Charlottesville, uh, Roddy Jones and I got a chance to visit with you a little bit before that series started. And that series yeah. alone was gut wrenching. It was a gut wrenching weekend for your team. Almost as if somebody or collectively some bodies had to decide we're not going to let it in like this. Do you sense that coming off that weekend, that's where this turned for you and your team? I, I know you mentioned your staff, and you got a great staff, but somebody in that clubhouse had to decide, didn't they, or some bodies? Yeah, 100%. And, um, you know, you have to practice what you preach, too, as the head coach about being in the moment. And you talk to your players all the time about what adversity does and what it can do for you if you let it. It's either going to break you or it can make you a lot tougher. And you have to give credit to those guys, you know, starting with an Angel Zarate, a Danny Soretti, you know, on the mound with our older guys like Nick Pry and, and Davis Palermo and Will Sandy, all of our guys, you know, they made that decision. And, you know, we did talk about, we had some gut-wrenching losses, you know, two 14-inning road mm -hmm. losses at Louisville. Um, that one, we were in a three-hour delay with a bomb threat, which we none of us had, had ever gone through. And then that might... <laughs> And then, like you said, at Virginia, you know, we're fighting like crazy. We take a three-run lead in the 10th, and then we lose that lead. And you just had to say, okay, we, this has got, you know, this is going to help us if we let it. We can get some momentum because then we will have been in those situations and we know how to handle them. And dang, if these guys hadn't done that. Coach, you mentioned a couple names there. We got to ask you about Vance Honeycutt. We showed a graphic on all ACC last night with his numbers before May 1st and since May 1st. What got into that guy at the end of his freshman season? He has been tearing the cover off the ball. Yeah, special, special kid. And, uh, you know, he started off really well for us this year. Um, and he had a slight mechanical flaw in his swing, uh, you know, but he was getting away with it. And then you have to give Coach Weir's Bicky credit, our hitting coach, him and Vance, and really Vance the most credit because he made the change about 
five, six weeks ago, you know, getting rid of that tilt and trying to be more direct to the ball. He's so strong and he's so fast. I've told a lot of people, you know, if he cuts back on those strikeouts, this kid could steal 50 bases. So we're lucky to have Vance. Um, he comes from a great family. His dad played at UNC. He had a chance to sign professionally, and he has been such a different make, maker for us. You know, golly, 20-plus home runs and 20-plus stolen bases. You don't see that much anymore in college baseball. Scott, I, I want to get back to the bigger picture here for this league a little bit. Obviously, you guys won the championship. You know how good this league has been. You've been in the league, good heavens, 20-odd years now. You obviously, as a head coach, as a pitching coach, whatever, you know how good this league is and how deep this league is. Uh, so I want, to, I want to sprinkle some big picture in here. Uh, Gabby Sanchez was with us an hour ago. He thinks there's a chance for 11. Do you think the league deserves 11? I mean, obviously only four schools are going to host, but does the ACC have the kind of resume you think that gets 11 teams in the tournament today at noon? I 100% uh, yes to that question because it's the deepest we've ever been. Um, everybody can beat everybody. I think every team in our league, even the two teams – but then made the ACC tournament, you know, on any given weekend can beat you. And on any given weekend could probably win a regional. So, um, you know, I thought we, were, we had the best league top to bottom uh, this year. I really did. Uh, you know, you look at a team like Pitt, so close to playing in the championship game. And they're older and they're tough. And, uh, you know, I thought mm -hmm. Clemson was really good. So I'm hoping and crossing my fingers for those teams because it, it, it represents really good. Gabby, I think we could possibly get 11 teams in. It may be hard, but I'm hoping. Scott, why do you think that the league is so deep right now? Because I feel like, you know, for years, the SEC has been the cream of the crop. Now, our league is probably going to have more teams in the dance, same number of hosts, should have should have had more, should have had five with Notre Dame taking one of the SEC spots. But why do you think the ACC is in such a good place right now? Um, You know, I think, I think the coaches are working really hard recruiting. And then I think, you know, now with the transfer portal, it allows you to have an older team. Um, you know, different schools recruit different ways, uh, but it does allow you to fill some spots and some gaps with some older kids um, that have played a couple college seasons. And that makes a world of difference. If you look at a lineup card, you know, and you have seven true freshmen out there, you know, you're going to, it's, it's going to be a battle and it's going to be up and down, but you know, Notre Dame's a great example. You look at their lineup, and, I mean, that is senior, 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 senior grad transfer, and, and those guys are older, they're stronger, and they're more experienced. You know, there's the other thing, too, and you mentioned the experience level. You've got one. NC State, ironically, has the other. we got some really good rookies in this league, too. I mean, you saw Tommy White go oppo in the tournament. I mean, Vance Honeycutt's been on fire. He's the tournament MVP as a freshman. I mean, you can have all these older guys, and I think there's some – I mean, Danny Ceretti's played, what, for 10 years for you? It just feels like <laughs> Danny ceretti has been there a million years. Um, I mean, but the impact of the young players, too. Now, White was a little more pronounced right off the top. Honeycutt's had an unbelievable May. But young guys in this league have also grabbed some of the spotlight, too, haven't they? Yeah, 100%. And in North Carolina, you know, we, we have to continue to do that. You know, we talk to our coaches all the time. We have to get the best high school players and start in our state, and, we, and they have to get better and they have to develop. But what you're hoping for is, you know, you have, you know, two, three, max, maybe four, and then you got some guys that have been through it that can help those through it. But you have to have – we wouldn't be where we are right now without having a dynamic player like Vance Honeycutt. And, uh, you know, a guy like Danny Soretti, he seems like he's ultra, ultra old, but this is his true fourth year where he missed – you know, he missed a complete year with COVID – um, but a lot of teams right. have those fifth year guys, but that's going to start going away because the COVID effect will will eventually, you know, calm down and guys won't have that extra year. You might have a couple grads, but you'll have true four year players, I believe. And I think the major league draft has has made a difference too because the the rounds are, are lower, um, and you're going to have more mm -hmm. kids showing up on campus. Uh, Scott, I got a personal question. Um, I was in Chatham with the Anglers on Cape Cod in 2017. We got a chance oh, wow. to interview Mike Fox when he was up at Veterans Field. He came up to the booth. Uh, number one, 
Will you send some guys to Chatham this summer, hopefully after a deep run through the NCAA tournament? And number two, if you're going to be up on the Cape, will you join the broadcasters on the radio uh, in the booth at Veterans Field? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, 100%. I was already looking at my calendar. Um, I'm going to try. I'll, I'm not going to try. We'll definitely come to the Cape because we have a number of guys, and we have, I think, four in Chatham. Um, we have a lot of other guys that will be up there, and it's a place that I love going, love watching. There's nothing better than watching a game on the Cape. I'm hoping you know, to get my family up there with me. Um, at least my wife can come with me, hopefully. It's a, it's a beautiful place, too, in the summer. Don't love going up there when it's cold, but, um, yeah, we we'll definitely do that interview for sure. We've had some great, great players in Chatham and, and what, what great history that, that place has for sure. Do you think when you go up there that you'll have to have somebody translate the Sanford for them? May, maybe. <laughs> um, so we'll go to Chatham Squire. It's the Chatham Squire is my favorite place, or however you say it. Obviously, my accent, you know, they may not understand anything I'm saying up there, but I enjoy being up there, that's for sure. Uh, Scott, when you right, go up there, the getaway if, yeah. if you're wearing the Carolina blue, people will ask you about Andrew Milla. You remember when Andrew oh. Miller struck out 12 guys in the Fog game? <laughs> yep. yep. What a great Star Hill man. And a great big leaguer. Just retired, and uh, he's very involved still with our program. Yeah, that's cool stuff. We've had some players in Chatham, man. Yes, you have. Hey, here's the here's the real question. Uh, given, uh, given the fact Fox's name went on the facade now, I know he gets, uh, I know he gets a free seat now. I know he doesn't have to worry about being on the ticket list this weekend. Um, <laughs> how many former players do you think you'll have? You'll have a, I mean, I know you're hosting and hosting comes with a lot of things to it, but your place has become a bit of a pit for teams too. Now, I mean, you like being at home. You guys, you guys got some stuff rolling at the Bosch this year a little bit and, flair for the dramatic as well yeah 100 percent um you know sometimes you do have to go on the road and and get it done that's important but if you can work hard and have a chance to host a regional you like your chances even better um we always talk about playing at the playing at home needs to mean something and it does and so excited for our players i mean they they deserve this and also extremely excited for our fans and uh yeah we were giving coach fox a hard time you know yesterday he came to the game, and we said, well, you probably need to buy a ticket. I think it's sold out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we, yeah. Found, hey, we found him a ticket, though. We get we found him a ticket on our pass. Oh, well, that's big of you. I mean, you guys, I knew you'd take care of him. I mean, the man's name's on the facade, Scott, and you probably want to make sure he's on, you know, whatever, whatever kind of comp list you got there for the event. You always probably want to take care of him, don't you? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, having it was a really neat moment too yesterday when we went up for the press conference and he was up there and uh, you know I wouldn't be sitting in this chair. It's still you know I still have a hard time. Sometimes I think I'm dreaming when I'm sitting. I still call it his office where I'm sitting right now um, because it was his office and it still is his office to me. But to have the opportunity and to be sitting in this chair, you know, is is very humbling. And coach gave it to me, so I'm I'm always going to be extra grateful to him for that. Well, congratulations on the championship. We look forward to finding out who's going to join you in Chapel Hill uh, coming up at noon today on ESPN2. Thanks for the time. Thank you guys for having me. Go Heels.